In this review, we're going to have a look at two lenses, the Canon EF 50mm f1.4 and the Canon EFS 18-55mm lens. We're going to compare them, see what they're good for and who should buy them. Before we begin, it's important to point out the fact that the EFS 18-55mm kit lens actually has multiple versions. Some have IS in the name, some have SDM in the name, etc. I'll explain what these mean throughout the review and you'll be able to tell what each version can do based on the letters in the name. First off, let's discuss focal length. The EF 50mm f1.4 lens has a focal length of 50mm. Its focal length is fixed and it is therefore a prime lens. The Canon 18-55mm lens is a variable lens as it can be zoomed in and out, which changes the focal length in real time. When zoomed all the way out, so you can see more of the frame, the lens is at 18mm. As you zoom in more and more, the focal length climbs and goes up to 55mm, which is the maximum. The advantage of a prime lens, which has a fixed focal length, is that it tends to produce sharper images. The obvious advantage of a variable lens is that it can be zoomed in and out, making it more versatile. What about the aperture? In the case of the 50mm f1.4, it can open up to f1.4. The lower the f number, the wider the aperture can open up, and thus it can allow in more light. The EFS 18-55mm kit lens opens up to f3.5 at 18mm, but as you zoom in to 55mm, the camera will force the aperture to close a bit, and thus at 55mm, you can only open it up to f5.6. This is not ideal in low light scenarios, as f5.6 will not allow a lot of light in, and thus you might struggle to get clean photos free of noise. If shooting in low light conditions, the EF 50mm f1.4 is the clear winner. There is also another advantage to the f1.4 aperture. When photographing wildlife, sports or fast moving subjects in general, the faster you can set your shutter speed to be, the more you can freeze motion. The problem is that the faster the shutter speed is, the darker the image will be. As a result, having a lens which allows in a lot more light, like the 50mm f1.4, will allow you to push the shutter speed further than the 18.55mm kit lens. What about their physical size and build quality? The Canon EF 50mm f1.4 measures 2.9 by 2 inches or 73.8 by 50.5 millimeters and weighs 10.2 ounces or 290 grams. On the other hand, the EFS 18-55mm kit lens measures 2.6 by 2.4 inches or 66.5 by 61.8 millimeters and weighs in at 7.6 ounces or around 216 grams. In terms of build quality, the 18.55mm lens is rather more plasticky than the 50mm f1.4. What about image quality? I'll show you some photos taken with both in a bit, but first, let's talk about the differences between these two lenses. Fundamentally, the 18-55mm kit lens is more versatile than the 50mm f1.4 lens, but at a price. It does a few things well, but it does nothing perfectly. You can zoom it in and out, and thus get a wider or longer lens when needed, but it will struggle in low light conditions and you won't get the same overall image quality as you will get with the 50mm lens. Also, you won't get anywhere near as much bokeh. You can zoom the lens all the way in, which will get you more bokeh than when zoomed out, but it still won't be able to match what f1.4 can do. Also, if you're zoomed all the way in, you're also forced to use an aperture of at least f5.6, which means they will struggle in low light. So the 50mm wins when it comes to sharpness and bokeh. 
What about vignetting? Vignetting manifests itself as darkened corners in the image. Both lenses have some vignetting, but it's not usually a problem. And also, if you're shooting portraits, which is what I do most of the time, vignetting can actually add depth to them and help guide the eye to your subject's face. What about chromatic aberration? Both will exhibit some, but this isn't a problem as far as I'm concerned, as only photographers will spot it. Chromatic aberration occurs mostly when shooting in the evening, and it can be spotted if you zoom in on straight lines in the photo. It usually manifests as a green or purple glow that runs along straight lines. What about image stabilization? Now, this is where the 18 to 55 mm kit lens gets an edge. You see, the EF 50mm f1.4 lens does not have any IS, whilst the variable 18 to 55mm lens does. Make sure to look for IS in the name. This is why this lens is actually quite good for video. The B roll that you've seen in this video of the Canon 18 to 55mm lens was actually shot on a second 18 to 55mm kit lens. Now this makes this relatively affordable little lens quite useful for video, especially if you're just getting started. I'm about to show you what these lenses can do, and I'm going to show you both photos and videos. The photos taken with the 18 to 55 mm and the 50 mm f1.4 lens were taken using a Canon 77D camera. The B-roll that you've seen of the 18 to 55 mm kit lens so far in this video was shot on the same Canon 77D. Let's begin. By the way, if you're finding this video to be helpful, don't forget to leave a like, as it will help with the algorithm and other people will be able to find this video as well. And now, back to the video. So which cameras are these lenses compatible with? The Canon EFS 18-55mm kit lens is compatible with APS-C cameras. In other words, it will work on Canon cameras which have a cropped sensor. It will not work on full-frame cameras such as the Canon 6D. The Canon EF 50mm f1.4 will work on any Canon DSLR that has an EF slash EFS mount. Neither of these lenses will work on EFM or RF cameras unless you use an adapter. What about vlogging? It can either be used for that? Well, technically you can use either. In the case of the 50mm f1.4 lens, it allows in a lot of light, and you'll get beautiful bokeh at the cost of image stabilization. Also, you won't be able to vlog handheld, as a lens at 50mm is pretty zoomed in. You'll have to use a tripod, gorillapod, or place the camera on a flat surface. In the case of the 18-55mm lens, it doesn't allow in as much light, which will somewhat limit the location where you can film and get clean footage, but it is wider at 18mm, so it's not as zoomed in and it has IS so you can get stabilized footage from it. If you're not sure which one to get or how you want to vlog, you should probably just get the 18 to 55mm kit lens. What about if you're a YouTuber and want to film in your room? with a camera always on a tripod. In this case, the 50mm f1.4 lens wins hands down. You get more light and a more blurry background, and the lack of IS doesn't matter, as the lens will always be stationary. So, what are these lenses good for? Both are quite versatile, 
and can be used for basically any application. But I'd say the 50mm f1.4 lens is more suitable for portraits and headshots, while the 18 to 55mm is a more all round lens and is more suitable for video out of the two. Also, when it comes to minimum focusing distance, the 18 to 55mm kit lens can do 0.82 feet or 25 centimeters, and the 50mm f1.4 lens can do 1.5 feet or 45 centimeters. What is minimum focusing distance? Simply put, if you get a lens too close to a subject, it won't be able to focus. Each lens has its own minimum focusing distance between it and the subject before it can actually focus. How easily do they handle? Both of them have an AF slash MF switch on the side, which allows you to jump between manual and autofocus. The 18 to 55 mm lens has a zoom ring, of course, and they both have manual focus rings. In the case of lens rings, bear in mind that they're usually less smooth after a few years of use. Both turn smoothly and easily when the lens is new, but after a while, this won't hold quite as true. What about longevity? How durable are these lenses? Neither is particularly sturdy, as both feel kind of light and plasticky. I'd recommend being careful with them and get them either a hood or UV filters to protect the glass element. So, in conclusion, which one should you buy? Both of these lenses can produce great images if used properly, and they both have their pros and cons. If you want an all-purpose lens that doesn't do anything amazingly well, but which is more versatile and does a little bit of everything, I'd grab the 18 to 55 mm kit lens. On the other hand, if you want a lens that you want to do portraits or headshots with, and get that beautifully blurred background, the Canon 50mm f1.4 is the way to go. If you've already learned a bit about photography and videography, and you'd like to graduate to something more mid-range, feel free to have a look at the lens review playlist on my channel. You can find links down below, or click the card in the top right corner. I've reviewed all sorts of lenses from the Canon EF 50mm f1.4, and EF 50mm f1.8 to the Canon RF 15-35mm f1.2 LIS USM and Canon RF 85mm f1.2 LUSM. Do you have any questions? Feel free to leave a comment down below and I'll do my best to get back to you. If you'd like to purchase any of the items I've mentioned in this video or see how much they cost in your country, I have a link down below where you can view them. Thank you for listening. Don't forget to leave a like, subscribe and hit that bell. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.